It's the Garage Shared Podcast, and I am Gavin Ford. With me is Selecta and oh. Zephyr. Bonjour. They're ahead of their release, Sweet Feeling, Sweet, Sweet Feeling, on GS Dubs. Hi, guys. How you doing? <laughs> good, how are you? Yeah, not, Fantastic, not so yeah, bad, very not good. So bad. Nice evening. We've asked people to ask you questions, and they've come through. In their tens, <laughs> perfect. As many as ten. No, there's, there's, quite, there's, there's a lot of figures. There's a lot actually. Wow. So I'm, I'm, rather than me bore the cock off everyone, I am going to <laughs> just go with the, what people want to know. All right. Okay. Sounds very good. Sounds very good. And to be honest, their question, their f- one of their first questions, is probably the best way to start it. Okay. So let's go with them. First question is: How did the collab "Sweet Feeling" come about? Okay, good question. So I'll let, I'll let you yeah, take this. Yeah, yeah. I'll, so so we went to um, Jemmy had a night on in, in uh, Dalston in January, right? Yeah, <laughs> this collab. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, had, we, had, we, had, we did have a few drinks. To be honest, there is that photo. Right. There's a photo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's flash yeah, that photo yeah. up. So no, we're not. No, we're not flashing no, that no, photo. No, we're not. We're so not. The, right. Whoever's editing this, do there's not a, put that. There's a photo <laughs> in the ether of our phones only. Oh, is this the one that we played? Yeah. Oh, was that in Dalston? Yeah, it was in Dalston. No, was it Dalston? Yeah, it was. It was for was it a pub. It, it, it was, it was yeah. not Dalston. All right, well, it was okay. in East London. Right, 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 right. It's some, yeah, yeah, somewhere, yeah. somewhere in East London. Basically. Zephyr is the one who asked the question, how did this collab come about? <laughs> he sent this in because he didn't know by the sounds of it. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't produce any of it. Basically, we were in a pub, we were playing Garage, and we had a few drinks, and we said, let's do a collab. And uh, yeah, and then I came up with a sketch. I think some piano, a few piano bits and stuff. I sent it over to you. Yeah, when when you sent me the stems, I was like, "This is uh, this is this is tickling the right fit, part I of my brain." I thought it fitted so. both of our sounds. Yeah, and yeah, you came in, did the bass, the drums, the keyboard solo as well. Very fancy. All came together very nice. It came. It's, came it's, really it's a nice amalgamation of our sounds. Yeah, I think it was it was yeah. definitely a fifty fifty like. The way how the, the creativity and the elements. I'd say it was actually 80 20 me. Oh, there we so. go. With these biases and eight. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So, yeah, that's pretty much how that's it came good, together. That's good for Zephyr to learn how to collab come about as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you remembered. Uh, who inspires you? Oh, my inspiration. Oh, in, in life or in, yeah. in music? Or? If you do life or music, or if it's two different people. Do you want to start? I mean, for me, it's going to have to be like MJ Cole, Todd Edwards, Wookie, Jeremy Sylvester. Yeah, just old school garage. Everything from Pure Garage 2 CD. <laughs> like, listen to that CD and you'll be is like, it, oh my God, this is from that. That's from that. This that's is from where that. uh, this thing could be interesting because obviously two different eras yeah. of garage. You, you, so you're, you, I'm curious of all of these answers to see if how different they are because... Um, we, well, me and Selector have been making garage since a long, long time, <laughs> <laughs> and you're you're one of the new breeds. Yeah. So I'm Fresh interested blood. to see if, what the influences are. Yeah, I think on a uh, on on a garage sense. Uh, so, but well, so I, I I'm I'm 23. I've been producing since I was 13. So I, I've got a lot of production behind me. But it's only really the last three years that I was actually starting to try and do dance music, and then that fell into garage, and then things have kind of gone the way that they've gone. Um, I think with regards to Garage, um, I'd definitely say Sammy Vergy was a big one. Yeah. I think it is a, for a lot of people getting into the scene. Um, and then kind of getting into his music, I did then sort of start to discover the scene with yourself, with Conductor, with yourself, and a, a lot of the, sort of the other people that make up the scene as we know it today. Um, but I think in terms of like the sort of spin on Garage that I have is there's there's quite a sort of a funky element to it. So I think my mum raised me on people like Jamaraquai. Mm. People like Shaka Khan, Cheryl mm-hmm. Lynn, like all these artists that have re- sort of got a real funk and groove to their music. Um, and whilst I think I sort of came into it with like a bass influence, it's kind of gone full circle to where it is now, where a lot of the music that I do put out is essentially garage music, but with kind of funk and, and mm-hmm. sort of grooved undertones to it. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a, a sort of arranged palette of different artists. Is there a record that got you into garage? Can you remember one particular one? <laughs> You're going to hate this, but it was... Uh, Ne- never soft the Mike, Mike delinquent remix was uh, oh, <laughs> I, I, it's a good remix <laughs> I don't know why I don't know why I would hate that like uh, it's a great uh, remix yeah, and then uh, uh, yeah uh, and then yeah I think um, I, I, I think I heard that before I actually knew what Garage was as such um, and then uh, and then yeah I, can't, I think I fell into the scene in, in, a, in, a, in a way that a lot of people do when 
um, I started hearing some of Virgie's collab- uh, Virgie's productions going more from kind of bass to mm. more of a melodic sort of garage style. On, yeah, that was a good transition. I, I love that. Yeah. One. As soon as that's the more garagey, like it wasn't like le- sort of less bassline, but more more soul. To exactly. It. Like, you know, yeah. It just, I was just, I, was, I loved it. Like, and I think that's that's where a lot of the basis of the scene that kind of we the sort of the mm. ecosystem that we n- we now make up kind of comes from that sort of. That sort of sound, I'd say. And what record got you into it? <sighs> well, I say one record. It was a record by DJ. Uh, it was a record by Jammin, which is DJ Zinc, which is on Pure Garage. I can't actually remember the name of it, but everything on that Pure Garage 2 CD. Pure Garage 2. Can you Pure remember Garage which Jammin one was Pure Garage 2? Bit right? Can you remember which Jammin one was on Jammin. Pure Garage 2? Dum, dum, um, dum, 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 Hold on. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Jammin, hold on. That was the first track I ever heard that was Garage. And EZ mixes it into a remix of Old Dirty Bastard, um, Baby I Got Your Money, okay. he re- on the on the decline. decline, yeah. That two blend of those two, that was what I felt. My friend showed me that, and after that I was hooked. And yeah, I was 10 years old, and that just blew my mind. Yeah, It's mad that, that um, for our bit rates in the background, by the way, with the garage <laughs> knowledge, knowledge yeah. garage Wikipedia in the back, um, Pure Garage 2 got everyone I know into garage, yeah. laughing, and... Mike Delinquent got everyone into Garage younger. Yeah. So it's interesting, the two different things. Um, but yeah, this is this is all interesting to me. I love seeing the difference <laughs> in things. So, and that was actually the next question, which I didn't even know. Someone asked, what's the best Garage event you've ever attended? Ooh, attended? Um, oh, good quite, oh, I mean, I've been to old school. I mean, I went and saw EZ eight hour set in the O2 centre, when Matter, I think it was called Matter or Indigo O2. Yeah. Were you, th- were you there? Okay. You, oh, okay. <laughs> so I, I, I went to, I went to, it must have been a- None I, taken. <laughs> yeah. La- in the last decade, I went to one of the EZ8 hour sets. That was really good. There's been a few, the old school ones that I've been to. New school. Um, uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know if kind of, I don't know if I could put my finger on a new school event. I mean, they've all been, most of them have been pretty good, but I can't think of there's one. Any standouts for you? I think, um, uh, I'll say overall. Um, so I, I went to university in Durham, which, for those that don't know, isn't a partic- it doesn't have a particularly vibrant uh, night- nightlife scene. <laughs> um, uh, but I remember in my second year, when I was about nineteen, um, Flavor D actually came to play. She did an all night set. So she played for three hours, um, and I remember like that was when I was first starting to get into that music. And I think I came away like. There, there weren't many events that I went to whilst I was at uni where like it was a sort of music that A, I liked, but then B, also just the crowd was just like going nuts to it. Yeah. Um, and like just the way that she like controlled the room and stuff was like a really kind of inspirational moment for me. And especially like the sort of some of the sounds that she was playing, I came out of that being like, right, I need to do this. Like I just, I need yeah. to go home and just work out how to make this sort of stuff. Um, so I think overall that was, a, that was probably my favourite one. In terms of like the new school nights, um, I mean, I I had an absolutely terrible set time at it. I played I played five till six, but um, yeah. but the yeah, ga- yeah. garage people at E One, I think, I think the 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 night itself was a really good night, but um, I kind of on a larger, on a on a on a wider sort of meaning, it was kind of I think for a lot of people, it was the first time we'd all kind of seen each other since yeah. lockdown had taken place. Well, everyone been brought together. Basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I remember walking into the green room, just seeing like a lot of people that I hadn't seen for like two years in person, but then a lot of people also that I'd met over the internet, but not actually yeah. met in person a yet. Of, a lot of the, the I think that was the first time I met you in person. Probably, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I met a lot of quite a few people. Yeah. Quite, a, quite a few people. So that that, 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 was, was, that it was it was good for the scene. I think to have bring people together. For, for it was a special night. Bring yeah. everyone together at a big venue as well. It felt like it was we were part, you know we were part of something that was meaningful. I think it was also the first event of of that sort of scale that was purely made up of people from our scene yeah and just all new garage yeah. new garage yeah, exactly, like at E1 yeah. someone like E1 it, that was n- never done before in the history of yeah. garage we were part of that yeah, we were part of that yeah here we go you weren't no. <laughs> <laughs> cheers garage people <laughs> um, but it's uh, yeah, it's hopefully there's more events like that to come. Yeah, fingers crossed. I'm, I'm just gonna say a shout out to. Uh, I just came to my head that Gem, I mean, Jemmy's Jemmy and friends nights are always good fun. I did one, the one I did in Cam, he did one in Camden last year, just after lockdown. And I might be doing the next and, one. Ooh, there we go. A little, little, little nugget of a uh, so. little nugget. Oh yeah, that one. There was, I saw yeah, the, 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 the video. Yeah, there were yeah. videos from that. That was like the first time that I'd gone to a, an event playing new music and after the pandemic and actually there were well, there was a lot of young people as well, but they were just loving it. Like, mm. And to see that. That was the first time I'd ever received 
proper love for playing new music. Yeah, like yeah, garage yeah, events, yeah. but old school ones mm. where they don't really. It's not. The, like, it doesn't quite translate. Yeah, sometimes they just they kind of like if I just dropped a big anthem, you know, I could just play anthems the whole time, and it would have had a better reaction from the crowd. But yeah. you know, I'm, I make new music, and you know, we all do, and we want to play that. So. Yeah, it's like the whole the whole the whole benefit of the rave is obviously going out and seeing all the music that you've played in your bedroom enjoyed in a club setting and seeing people react to those exactly. tracks yeah, that you've yeah. made and to see that yeah it was great so yeah that's what i'd say the next question was what's the best garage event you've played but uh, it sounds like you've answered that I've, for me that, yeah it would be jemmy and, jemmy and friends that i did was that the same yeah. as it, but your one might mm, not be in terms of played uh that's a hard one um i'm trying to think i think uh the we we did a, a Steppers Club night in uh, in London back in. Actually, no, I'm not going to say that one. I'm going to say the step that we we did a Steppers Club one in Bristol. That was the first event that we did out of lockdown, and it was two nights after the lockdown restrictions completely got lifted. And I mean, a it was a sick night, but I think b the reason that it was quite special for us was that our label got completely born out of lockdown, and we'd only really like seen our following kind of grow online. And it was the first time we got and sort of experienced that in person. And so obviously going to like a night that was sick and people had just come to see artists that were a part of our label and seeing like people like rock up in like t-shirts from that we'd sold and stuff. It was, it was all just a bit, it was quite hard to take in. It, like we kind of, like there was a point where we went outside and was like, this is, this is actually traveled. Like this is, yeah, like, seeing this in person, people, it's like, yeah, it's actually, yeah. Like humans, exactly. yeah. physical bodies. I carried on going uh, up to people in the crowd being, that's a very nice t-shirt. <laughs> and they didn't know who I was. So they just yeah. like, weird. So like, <laughs> yeah, this is hobo. <laughs> God, you're in t-shirt <laughs> reviews in here. This is weird. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll say, I'll say that one for me. Yeah, yeah. nice, nice. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good one. So, favorite venue to play? Okay, I'm, I'll start off. I think, Probably Steel Yard, and I did a show in Steel Yard in London, and the sound system there was unreal. So yeah, I'm, I think for me that'll be nice. That's a good one. Um, so which one did you say? Sorry, I said Steel Yard. Oh yeah, in uh, Central. Yeah, great sound system. I'd say may, maybe a ba- basement forty five in Bristol. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I, I played there a few months ago and had a had a pretty sick night. I think Br- Bristol is actually starting to become. A really good city for garage. Yeah. I know a lot, a lot, a lot, well. a lot of people obviously associate Bristol with sort of drum and bass and jungle and all that sort of stuff, and rightfully so. Like there is a lot yeah. of that music there. But the last few times, like, because a, a lot of the time, like, I'm sure you found this as well. I'm sure you found this as well. Where like you go to a city and the event sold really well, but like you start playing like maybe your tunes or the tunes that you like that are a bit more underground, and people don't really get it mm. until you start playing like Flowers or whatever. Yeah. And, but like every time I've played in Bristol in the last year people get it like they know the tunes you're playing like they're, they they're they get it. down yeah. like your tunes that you've made people yeah. in the, the underground stuff they do get they're, it and they there's do know it and they're into there's it there's loads of producers in Bristol isn't there the new garage thing there's probably got to be the most I'm, sh- I'm probably the short Op- yeah. Opa Dan Badger's in Badger. there Badger uh, Shosh is obviously there Shosh. Yeah. there's more I'm, sh- I'm sure there's other conductors from Bristol. Conductors from Bristol. I'm can. sure there's a lot of up and coming ones as well. There's, that definitely, are, are there's there. definitely more worth forgetting. Burt Cope lives there now. Yeah, but Sam Dee okay. moving there. So okay. I guess that's what gets sensors yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Sensors yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. So there's probably Kobe JT's just moved there. Kobe JT. Okay. Yeah. 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 It seems yeah. like it seems like someone else yeah. has just moved there as well. I had a conversation. They've just moved there. There's like it's definitely the, the highest concentration of new garage producers is is coming to Bristol. Yeah. And that's obviously shown in the waves. That's good. That's yeah. It's good. That's what you need. Yeah. Um. Oh, and shout out to Workhouse, probably the best venue I've ever played in. <laughs> <laughs> We're filming this podcast in. Yes, thank you, Workhouse. In Shoreditch, make sure you check it out. They've got events on. There's a jazz trio tonight. Yeah, if you're into jazz, make sure you uh, um, check it. <laughs> uh, so, what is your ch- garage tune of the summer? Sweet feeling, so I like and Zephyr. Yeah, good yeah, plug. Yeah. Like <laughs> definitely a summer, big summer track. <laughs> Is there anything that you ha- haven't made that you're playing <sighs> or, uh, or feeling? Do you know? Do you know what? I mean, I really like your collab with Jemmy with a Qua- Quaver. Oh yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Th- I mean that. Uh, I wouldn't really call it a summer tune, but for a club track because it's so it's, yeah. it's a four four. It's bumpy, four floor, very yeah, yeah. very bumpy. I would say 
I'm going to say for actual vocal, just because I've heard it so much on TikTok, but Piri, Piri and Tommy words. I don't know if you guys have heard that tune. I know, you've told me about I've it. I've told you about yeah. it. Yeah, like, I mean, that's a vocal Garrett 4-4. Four, four. It's like MJ, very MJ Cole influence. I'd say that's probably one that, as a vocal track, stands out. Yeah. So. I, re- I reckon Summer Garage, the, uh, the the champion on a beach. Remix. Yeah, that's a wicked track. That's yeah, a, That's a big summer tune, mm. I think. I think I qualify. Is the collab with Gemma your favourite Zephyr tune? Oh, is it my favourite Zephyr tune? No, Sweet Feeling no. by Solid. Sweet Feeling, <laughs> that, that's also my favourite. <laughs> I would say, I would say it's up there. I do like the Don't Hesitate dub as well that you, you did a while ago, that. like that. Um, but Qua- yeah, Quaver as an original track, like one that's official, like an yeah, original yeah. track, I would say that, I love that track. I played it in the car. Yeah, that. yeah, I actually do really love that track. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it, bro. <laughs> Is that for your favourite selector tune? It's the recent one. The, uh, things you say. Yeah, things yeah, you say. Yeah, boy, yeah. Oh, man. I was saying to him earlier before before we started recording this that like, I remember waking up and seeing that on the Tyson Fury video and yeah. I, I thought I was I was still asleep. I was like, what's, 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 what's going on? Um, but yeah, no, it's that, it, like, it's, uh, I haven't actually got to play it in a rave yet, um, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is frustrating, but it's... it's yeah, I've played it on radio a couple of times now, and like, just it's, it just ca- I think it captures the best parts of your production. It's a sick Thank tune. Thank you. Nice one, man. Great tune. <laughs> Lovely bit of um, loving each other there. That was a nice <laughs> moment. <laughs> um, I was about to say, I don't know any soul let's choose. Not familiar with the back catalogue. What uh, upcoming artists, Ooh. garage Ooh. artists, who, who are you feeling? Um, I'll, st- I'll say well, De- Deja is someone that comes up a lot Jackham as well it's good um, Rich Ellis I mean these are all guys on GS Dart like these are all guys <laughs> yeah, 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 you're but they are they're really someone, someone, the right someone, crowd, someone, yeah. the, the, the A&Rs are doing a good job somewhere I, I agree with you all of this <laughs> I'd say the, the A&Rs are G- Gary <laughs> Shen GS Dubs they, they, they have a similar ear to me I always find that when I'm like doing my like if I'm doing like the selected Spotify playlist I like or charts there's always uh, Unknown David as well. You're doing stuff with, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, Number he's, one. He's sick. I love like, Unknown David. I, 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 I feel that sometimes I, there's a reason why I'm on the label that I'm on because the A&R seem to put out music that I tend to gravitate <laughs> towards or or the artists that are coming through a li- hearing my stuff and being inspired by that. And that's why I like it inherently because it sounds sim- like it's got that same yeah. vibe to it. I mean, Something I, like I, that. I could wank on about all of them. They're all amazing. <laughs> yeah. But Unknown David at the moment is the one. Yeah, he's, Unknown David is... He's just in his... Did you listen to his mix on Garage Shared Radio? He did a Spice Girls. Yeah, yeah. Like. So, I, I, so I actually play. I've been been playing the Spice Girls one out. I love that. He's done one of Britney Spears. Give me more. Yeah. yeah. I, and he did a speech that. introducing himself at the start of the mix, which is absolutely. <laughs> he's the Russian guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, he, he um yeah. He's, he, he's got a vibe to him that is cool. Different. They're all producers. You should check out. Uh, Zephyr. You, yeah, I got I got three. So I'll say Kai Sui. Yeah, Kai Sui's uh, cool. Ben Hydro. Yeah. And New Ends. All out of the Steppers Club stable, all like unbelievable producers. Yeah, Ben um, Hydro's wicked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've uh, I've actually known him for like quite a few years. Um, and okay. I, kn- I knew met yours, yeah. Yeah, and okay. I, kn- I knew he'd been producing for a long time. Um, and he he was sort of starting to kind of want to get into garage more and like put some music out. So he was actually when he was asking me like for pointers to where to go, I actually said like best label you could go to right now for like putting you know giving a platform to people in the scene that. Doesn't matter what following they've got, they're just good producers, as Garage said. And obviously, I've seen he's done a few bits with you guys, and it's gone yeah. really well. So, uh, but yeah, no, all three of them are sick producers. Yeah, yeah. Make sure we check all of them out. It's a solid six. Who is your favourite producer in Garage at the moment? Should I start? <laughs> yeah. I mean, every, uh, he, he knows this anyway. Big up Andy. I love Jemmy. Jemmy's the guy. I don't like, want to inflate his know, ego, yeah. man. Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. You need to play with D. He's, he's already oh, Andy, like the most just... arrogant person I know. <laughs> no, he's <man>. not. <laughs> yeah. Are you joking? Oh, uh, no, I mean, no, he knows he's good. Andy, but I love you. I, I know, I, I know. I just can't help it. Like, everyone knows you. that I love, I love, I, love, I just, I just, yeah, he's, I just, you know, you like his style as well. We both like his style, but is, is I don't know. There's, there's others, but I think his his consistency, I think, is I got the three eight. I'm gonna like. begrudgingly say, <laughs> Jemmy. <laughs> Actually, no. I think un- underrated as well as Prozac. I think yes, Prozac underrated as well. As well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prozac's wicked. Show. He's got Prozac's some. Obviously, his dubs are doing bits at the minute. The yeah. pump it dub is around. I'm seeing that a lot on TikTok. Yeah. Um, Who yeah. else? I mean, Soul, Soul Actors a good he's one. All right. He's alright. He's been around right. for a while, but like, <laughs> yeah, well, not really new. Not really new. Yeah, not really up and coming. But like, there's other. I just I think in terms of like, consi- obviously, consi- just can 
people that are consistent. There are the tracks that come through that are amazing. I, I mean, mm. that come through, but the people who are actually consistent, especially with like original music as well. I'm going to shout mm. one other name actually, which is going to seem really biased, but I've heard all of his music that hasn't come out yet, um, which is Sam Dealey. Yeah, he's got some um, good tunes. I don't. Like, I remember when uh, when when we first started working with Opadan, for instance. Mm. Um, She'd put out quite a bit of music already, but like she was sat on quite a lot. And I remember saying to a lot of people at the time, like, she's good, but you don't actually realise how good she is. And then obviously she started dropping the music and like it's obviously been amazing to see mm. where, where she's gone with it all. Um and I would categorise Sam Dealey in the in the same context that honestly as a producer, like people do not understand how good he is. Yeah. Yet. And like when he actually starts dropping some of the stuff that he sat on. Like I'd really think he could be one of the the next people that comes through. I mean, I'm excited because yeah, he's 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 unreal. But cool. Yeah, you can you can you can put me on record saying that. So. All right, fair play. <laughs> High praise. Hi. Cool. Well, I would um I'd chuck a tough culture in the mix as well with top producers as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'd agree with that. Um, I'm four. Yeah, yep. obviously. I'm, the legends. If, <laughs> if we want to talk about how brilliant we are, we got. <laughs> got <laughs> oh, right, cool. Because I dedicate podcast for that. Um. <laughs> Uh, what falling off the business? Good. What's your dream collaboration? Obviously, apart from you two have just done it, but now you've yeah, done yeah. that. Now <laughs> you're actually the dream. dream well, I can I can retire quite happily. Now, <laughs> I think, so. Who would you like to collab with? Doesn't does, it doesn't have to be garage person. It could be anyone. I've said this before. I mean, I don't know how many of you. I'm, I talk about him quite a lot. There's a guy called Jacob Collier who's like this just crazy young. Well, he's about or young. He's like in his mid twenties. Mate, crazy crazy musician. He's knows every single key, every single chord in the world. He's like, does jazz and a mixture of stuff. And um, yeah, he's probably someone that I'd like to sit in a studio with just to see what we make. It would be completely different and probably crazy as hell. But yeah, that'd be my guy. I think Garage, I'd say uh, Sammy Virgie. Yeah. And then I think non-Garage. Uh... Uh, maybe maybe Jamaicoi. I think Jamaicoi yeah, would be, be, yeah. cool be cool. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've collab. I think I've collaborated with most of the people. In yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two albums coming out. Two albums. I've got you one out of slag. two collab <laughs> albums. So, yeah, yeah, I've done the collab. Yeah, you've been about. So I don't mind collabing a bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's the best garage tune ever? Sweet Ooh. feelings, Ephraim <laughs> Solis. It's amazing how many questions that's yeah. been the answer to, isn't yeah. it? It's a one size fits all. <laughs> Any, anything that comes to your head? It's hard. It's hard. Um, I don't know, mate. I, I, I think I thought about this the other day, or oh, the other month. I posted something on, on on Instagram about it, but at the time I mean the, the one of the songs that came into my head was Wide Boys West Side just because of the saxophone on it <laughs> I love using horns but I just love the vibe on that it's, it's probably not the ultimate gar I mean it's probably I mean I don't know Gabriel, Gabriel there's there's loads of anthems and with the vocals good really good songs that have been written anthems mm. and stuff stuff from Wookie the whole of the Wookie album um, MJ Cole stuff like I, I just don't think I could pinpoint just even named, just Dodgers named every track that's ever come out there yeah. just cover all just the bases a, there's that, a is, lot. that is yeah. the, the most conservative answer you can possibly <laughs> isn't it like, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't say one there's just there's a whole load from especially from the old school era from the out, like album tracks that yeah that Public are, Demand tweeted that Wookiee Battle was the best yeah. garage record ever and I because of the subject me, obviously it's, it's a pretty perfect record mm. Gabrielle's a pretty perfect record bit right you're in the back you're with a garage kind of Battle. Battle, yeah. I reckon on my knees, bit right. Uh, and select yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a decent tune, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you're in the <laughs> got the medal. <laughs> so Wookie Battle Wookie is battle, the best garage yeah. tune ever. Yeah, I'm mean, gonna say it's up there. In the I, mean, it, I, I, I could give my vote to that. To yeah, be fair. I could yeah. throw my throw my hat. There you go. So say that. I'm glad we solved that. Well, that, that was uh, <laughs> well, well done. Well done congratulations. <laughs> We're going to send you a you, Steppers t-shirt. Yeah, yeah we'll, get, we'll give him a garage sale release as a prize. So. Well, don't go, don't, don't go too far. <laughs> right, this is the big one. Two-step or four-four? Oh, no. uh, I'm going to come in. I'm, I'm um, gonna, unless you want to... You, you want a label well, called Steppers Club. Know, I know. <laughs> you know what the worst, four, thing, about, you know what the worst thing about Steppers Club is? Is that I think we, we, didn't, we didn't actually release anything to two Steppers Club. Two Fuck, like 10, <laughs> 10 tracks in. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I've, I've always like very much been 4-4, but I'm having a bit of a, a two-step phase at the moment. 
We did it. We, we got our tracks too. Yeah, that, that's probably yeah, the, one yeah, of the first, yeah. only two step trick I've made this year. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd, yeah. I, I'm. I'm. I think history would point to me very much being a four four person, mm. but I'm. I mean, I'm starting to get into my two step a little bit. Like I just, I, I like getting techie in the drums. Yeah. And just, you know, it's the programming, like, isn't it? It's the drum. Yeah. The, the nice drum I'm just, I'm just, I just feel like I, I, I know that I can lay down a four four drum beat, and and that that. That'll be done in. It is easy, like isn't it, hour. to make it work? Yeah. Whereas I think I'm getting more fulfillment right now out of like knowing that I'm. It's gonna take me a bit of time to make it, but then the end product with a two-step drum beat is like, yeah, that's hard. Like yeah. that, then that, when you that, get that right. that's hard to replicate. I think yeah. when you get it right, programming is a bit more complicated. Yeah, I would say, but I'd well, you're four four, obviously. Like am, every track you've ever released. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, 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 no, some of my older stuff was more two-step, but I just, I just, yeah, still get into my groove with four four. I'm, all, I also do have like. I, like I used to love, well, I still do. But I used to love house and stuff. You know, mm. like I have a very mm. big house influence in my stuff. So it's four four. I like, you know, I like that. But I like it fast. Yeah, I yeah. like it faster than one thirty. I like to spook, spook anyone that, that <laughs> freaks out about. And if it's above one thirty, I like one three two is sweet spot. Yeah, yeah, know? one three two is the, mm. the gold zone. Yeah, <laughs> delicious. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, so to finish up, what? Free selector records should people listen to? Okay, three selector records. Three selector records people should listen to. Um, oh, I've got so many songs. <laughs> I mean, I would say uh, the last few years, probably on my knees with Bitrate on my knees. I think that's a a key one. Um, I would say uh, We Know Speak London, another one of mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember when you, you posted the music video to that and I had my face in it. Oh yeah, I put you in. <laughs> you just, you I didn't just ask you when it drops. I didn't ask you, yeah, I was just like, I didn't, didn't ask. I was like, I was like, whack. I was like, you know, I didn't ask, didn't ask anybody. I just put it on, I was like, you know what? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Hopefully, no, no one, no one, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, it no one. It was worth it for the shoe, man, it's banger. No, no one slid in the DMs complaining, so there we go, that's a good thing. Um, <laughs> and then the third one I would say, I'm gonna say Sammy Porter. So I did a remix of Sammy Porter, True Colors in 2017. Time eighteen, so listen to that as well. That's the old school. Yeah, that's probably yeah. the reason why. We're that was the reason why, why me, me and yeah, why even Gavin messaged Dio slid in my DMs on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that tune, mate. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was how, that's where it all began. <laughs> it was, yeah. No, then you put it on Pure Garage as well. So I would say that's my that was my two step. I was that era. I was making a lot of two step. That was me trying to <laughs> make. 2016, 2017 EDM and two step work together. That was me att attempting that basically. So go check it out. Most purest kind of music. <laughs> so pure. <laughs> and three separate tunes people should listen to? Uh, I'd say Be With Me. Yeah, big uh, Hold Me. No, Hold You. I've got another release one called Hold Me. Hold You. Uh, and then. Quaver. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I think my best music is is the stuff that I'm currently sat on. So um so yeah, there's 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 that's much better to come, I would say. Nice. Sweet. Wicked. All right. Selector and Sefa, sweet feeling out now. Out now. Go stream it. I have built a <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. Thanks guys. Oh, thanks for having Cheers, me. Cheers, thanks for having us. See you in a bit. Nice.